Geary with the black pieces. And um, first, we're just going to hear from Magnus what he said after winning game three. At least no one can claim that you're not creating entertainment in your game today, Magnus. No, this was, um, this was good. I think he made a pretty serious misjudge misjudgment this, at some point when he uh, decided to give up the second bishop. Um, I feel like as, as long as there's nothing concrete for him uh, in terms of attack, I'm just better positionally. Uh, and uh, maybe there was something, but he uh, couldn't, couldn't quite find it. And then, you know, it fell apart surprisingly quickly. And is this also a result of you having such a wide array of opening repertoires? No, yeah, sure. I mean, um, but he was also he was also out for for a fight when I decided to play something, um, something uh, fighting. He um, he tried to play for a win as well, so that was that was fair enough. Um, but I think, yeah, as I said, he, position was pretty pretty normal. I think quite fine for me. But then he just misjudged the position. Draw with a white would secure the match. Does that mean that we're going to see something a little more sane in this last fourth game? <laughs> we'll see. Good luck. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, a draw is enough for Magnus in this game. Are we seeing something sane? Something sane, but not drawish. Ah. Uh, Magnus definitely keeping the game alive. All the pieces still on the board. Um, it's really nice to see. A lot of the top players, when they just need a draw with white, they're quite cynical. Um, I've been the same myself in the past. Just if you need a draw, just drop, uh, swap off all the pieces. Get all the risk out of the position, but Magnus, okay, first trade of the of the position. He's just playing chess, and you got um, you got a lot of pieces on the board. So I think uh, Anish has picked a line which he must have played here. Yeah, uh, yeah so it's, it's it's interesting. And I, the reason I like this type of hippo setup um, is it's just so flexible. Uh, the position, if it opens up, will favour the black bishops, and any attempt to open up one side of the board is just met by a block. For example, if White pushes here now, it will just be blocked up. And, uh, okay, instead, Magnus decides to just push his queen forward. Um, I'm guessing black is going to do the same. Um, black will move his queen to this square. And you're right, Simon, it's just a guessing game. Um, here we go. Black is just wallowing in his first couple of ranks, right? Just sitting, waiting. And is white going to be brave enough to castle this side? Is black going to be brave enough to castle this side? Yeah. Uh, plans are so complex. Um, yeah. It's a bit of a guessing game. Yeah. yeah definitely. Uh, I mean, it's so tense. I mean, I use this word a lot, but we've seen so many games that have been very, very just <laughs> tense is the right word, nervy. And uh, here, I mean, white has a lot of space, actually. Black, on the other hand, is quite cramped. I had a similar thing in, against Ivanchuk in a, in a like online tournament, and he did a, he did he just castled kingside in the end. <laughs> so, but uh, um, you don't want to play that. More foolish than brave, probably. Yeah, yeah. It's certainly and it's... you called it, Simon. Um, it's the Dutch player in you. You just want to push your f pawn. I love pushing the the f pawn <laughs> on Freddy up the board, and I also like the idea of pushing the e pawn. You know, at some point, I want to just kill black basically blow it open uh, yeah because uh, you know the black king's in the middle i know my king's in the middle but my piece is a better place because of this lovely positioning of the knight that you you've mentioned yeah this looks very scary at some point if uh, if you can achieve it i'm not really sure what anisha's plan is with this queen move i guess his whole idea is to capture this pawn without running into a knight uh, knight jump but wow magnus I mean, the safer option would probably be castling this flank, castling this side of the board, but he chooses to castle the other way. And, uh, I mean, he's not scared. The White King, Black needs 10 moves to attack it. Yeah. Well, it's getting dramatic for Anish Giri. Must win situation here in game four. And actually, what a start to the FTX Crypto Cup because all the matches that are now playing game fours, there's must win situations for Ferruja and for Lee Emle to take it to tie breaks. Anish Giri fighting for his life in this first round against Magnus Carlsen and a bunch of moves. A bunch right. of moves, yeah. I was going to say, he has to use his magic wand here, and maybe he has with that move, pushing on the queen side, trying to break open that area of the board. Yep. Take this pawn. Uh, Magnus hasn't taken that one, but uh, here, for example, you could just give a check. The black king moves, and you're right. You could, at the very least, just park your king on this square. Put a knight on this square, you'll never get checkmated. Yep. But uh, Magnus, he, he's He wants to attack. checkmate instead. He, he, wants, he wants to finish it off. He you know, wants to so. see us do that dance. I think he will just go e5 and yeah. checkmate. I mean, like... Look at the Black King. White's pieces are now ready. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I'm not even calculating I'm that move. I'm just like, you know, it's just such a natural move to play. Check with the bishop, clear the lines open, and kill. Um, yeah. It's probably like, you know, as simple as that. But you're right. This check is the killer one. Um, you give up a pawn, but it, 
you, like you said, Magnus won't even calculate this one. He'll just see that, okay, he's given up a pawn. He'll check the Black King. There we go. He plays it instantly. And wherever the Black King goes, it's going to be stuck in the center forever. And uh, with all the heavy pieces on the board, with all the ammunition, the rooks, the queens, um, eventually this king will, yeah, it's just not going to survive. Movie music. So yeah. I would have some Hans Zimmer, some time, Ooh, you know. Yeah, I'm the quite, big one. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Build them up. Yeah. And then they suddenly come to this big crescendo. And oh, yeah. Yeah, just, yeah, you feel like you're doing something special, don't I you? I like it, yeah. That's cool. Black is trying his best to break through towards the White King, but if you look at attacking pieces, Black has no attackers around the White King. And, OK, Magnus doesn't even capture a pawn back. Um, I was going to say as well, before this game, one thing I would love to see in the tour is a beauty prize, like uh, the most brilliant game prize for each event, and Magnus is trying to achieve that now. Um, OK, a pawn was captured, the White Queen swings across, and look at the White Knights, look at the Black King, the White Bishop's beautiful, the White Pawn on the E6 square. I don't yeah. really see a move for black. That's the other problem. Disaster. I mean, black can't... OK, if you have to make a move like this, you're... He's setting the pieces up ready for the next game. Yeah. Putting right. his bishop back on its starting square. <laughs> and you still got to finish this position off, but... What, even what if might, he... Might do, I don't know. Uh, right, yeah. Even if he breaks all the rules, yeah. swap, rules swaps off the queens. Uh, I mean, you're attacking... Has he done oh, that? He's done it. Oh, <laughs> The curse of the commentator comes. <laughs> just don't swap on quick, and he's done it. That was, uh, but yeah, that, yeah. that was just unfortunate. <laughs> there, so, you know, it's, a, it's a killer. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the problem is, black has two pieces under attack. If you save the rook and continue uh, defending your bishop, I mean, white can win in a few ways here. I think you can win with giving a check, but for example, even if you trade off here and then just plant your knight into its dream square, you're just going to push this pawn forward and it will become a queen. Again, black is completely stuck. Black just cannot move. And there we go. Magnus plays the simple approach. He trades off, and this pawn is going to win the game. Uh, we'll see a result any moment this pawn will step forward. Um, you're actually threatening, for example, if black moves a pawn, you're threatening to give a check with your rook. And uh, oh, here, a fork. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just being Lovely. flashy here. A fork, oh. and the king moves. You make a new queen, and you checkmate shortly. That's we'll nice. see Anish Giri resign right now. Um, it's just complete domination. Magnus. He's upped his level the last two games. Mm. Yeah. Beautiful game. Yeah, just masterclass this last one. In the opening, this is why we learn openings, just to get a position you understand well, put your pieces on good squares. Middle games, we come up with plans. Here, Magnus came up with this attacking plan. And then, uh, yeah, just a bit of calculation, and that will finish it off. Anish is not even looking at his screen right now. He's ready to resign. He knows this last game has been a bit brutal. Yeah. yeah. Going to be interesting too here from Magnus Carlsen. So in the first major in the Oslo Esports Cup, Magnus was struggling a lot uh, with being sick. He was uh, sick uh, the first five days or something of that tournament and he didn't win it. He was uh, struggling with his form. We know he is out to win this tournament. And what a start to the day. It's over. Winning also game four, Magnus Carlsen.